If you were to stick your hand into a bag full of one of every animal species on the planet, chances are you'd probably pull out a beetle. Over 400,000 beetle species are known to exist on the planet. That's about 25% of all known animal species, and there are still so many more yet to be discovered. One of the most recognizable groups of the entire beetle order are the dung beetles. So let's find out why a beetle rolling a ball of dung is so important. They may not have the most glamorous lifestyle, but dung beetles are an essential part of the ecosystem. From your local patch of farmland to the rich forests of central Amazonia, these tiny engineers have sculpted their way across the planet by burrowing and consuming dung. And they're quickly becoming recognized more and more by society for the ecosystem services they provide. So to find out more, we asked some experts. Dung beetles, they primarily feed on mammalian dung across the globe. And basically, dung recycling is the main service that dung beetles provide to our environment. And this is a huge service, and it falls into some smaller subservices. Regulation of food chains, enhancement of plant growth, bioturbation, and seed dispersal. And some of these are pretty important for humans too. They, of course, remove dung from the surface. And dung on the surface contains a lot of pathogens, contains a lot of parasites. So in an agricultural setting with lots of cows, if you don't have a way of removing this dung, they get exposed in higher quantities to parasites and they tend to be sicker. This was a big problem in Australia. This is Addo Elephant National Park in South Africa. It's an area renowned, of course, for its elephant population. But it also acts as one of the last few remaining homes for one of the largest dung beetles in the world, the Cape Flightless Dung Beetle. Once widespread across southern Africa, due to habitat destruction coupled with their low reproductive rate and flightless dispersal, the species is now restricted to a narrow range in South Africa, with the largest population found here. Whilst there has been little research into the relationships between dung beetles and mammals, at Addo, the reintroduction of elephants has most likely contributed to the continued existence of the beetle. The elephant dung provides the beetles with their daily nutrition, and in return, like many species of dung beetle, they're able to begin their job as secondary seed dispersers. Primary dispersers would be something like maybe a monkey in a tree who eats a fruit and then at some point later has to go to the bathroom. And within this, there's a lot of seeds, right? There's a lot of seeds within the dung. But these seeds are very close to each other and often they're of the same species. So one of the wonderful things that dung beetles do is they include at least some of these seeds within their dung balls and they move the seeds further away. And this is important for the seeds because like with humans, when you are very close together, it's much easier to transmit diseases. It really decreases rates of germination or the likelihood that a seed will survive if it is next to other seeds of the same species or too close to them, which often does happen in dung. It's believed that co-declines of mammals and dung beetles go hand in hand. This has huge cascading effects on tropical ecosystems, as many of the ecosystem services dung beetles provide disappear. So they are very abundant, very diverse, and quite relatively well studied in comparison to other insects. And uh, actually, that's what makes them as a model organisms to assess uh, the human impact on environment. And also, these made dung beetles to be one of the uh, focal organisms in assessing biodiversity loss worldwide by IUCN. We may question our lifestyle, but it's certain that our world will be a much smellier, less productive and less biodiverse place without the mighty dung beetle. If you're interested in learning more about dung beetles, visiting your nearest natural history museum is a great starting point. And you can always email an expert living in your country. 
There are loads of entomologists willing to tell you all about this fascinating group of beetles. And don't forget to subscribe to the EcoSapien channel.